Exmoor. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Exmoor is a national park situated on the Bristol Channel coast of southwest England. The park straddles two counties, with 71% in Somerset and 29% located in Devon. The total area of the park, which includes the Brendon Hills and the Vale of Porlock, covers 267 square miles, 692 square kilometres of hilly open moorland, and includes 34 miles, 55 kilometres of coast. It is primarily an upland area, with a dispersed population living mainly in small villages and hamlets. The three largest settlements are Porlock and Dulverton, and the combined villages of Linton and Lynmouth, connected by the Linton and Lynmouth Cliff Railway, which together contain almost 40% of the national park population. Prior to being a park, Exmoor was a royal forest and hunting ground, which was sold off in 1818. Exmoor was one of the first British national parks, designated in 1954, under the 1949 National Parks and Access to the Countryside Act, and is named after its main river, the River X. Several areas of the moor have been declared a site of special scientific interest due to the flora and fauna, which have some legal protection from development, damage and neglect. In 1993, Exmoor was designated as an environmentally sensitive area. Section 1. Geology. Exmoor is an upland of sedimentary rocks classified as gritstones, sandstones, slate, shale and limestone, siltstones and mudstones, depending on the particle size. They are largely from the Devonian and early Carboniferous periods. The name Devonian comes from Devon, as rocks of that age were first studied and described here. As this area of Britain was not subject to glaciation, the plateau remains as a remarkably old landform. Quartz and iron mineralisation can be detected in outcrops and subsoil. The underlying rocks are covered by moors and supported by wet, acid soil. The highest point on Exmoor is Dunkery Beacon. At 1,704 feet, 519 metres, it is also the highest point in Somerset. Coastline Exmoor has 34 miles, 55 kilometres of coastline, including the highest cliffs in England, which reach a height of 1,350 feet, 411 metres, at Colbone Hill. However, the crest of this coastal ridge of hills is more than a mile, 1.6 kilometres, from the sea. If a cliff is defined as having a slope greater than 60 degrees, the highest cliff on mainland Britain is Great Hangman, near Coombe Martin, at 1,043 feet, 318 metres high, with a cliff face of 800 feet, 244 metres. Its sister cliff is the 716 feet, 218 metres Little Hangman, which marks the edge of Exmoor. Exmoor's woodlands sometimes reach the shoreline, especially between Porlock and the Foreland, where they form the single longest stretch of coastal woodland in England and Wales. The Exmoor coastal heaths have been recognised as a site of special scientific interest due to the diversity of plant species present. The scenery of rocky headlands, ravines, waterfalls and towering cliffs gained the Exmoor coast recognition as a heritage coast in 1991. This dramatic coastline is an adventure playground for climbers and explorers with its huge waterfalls and caves. The cliffs provide one of the longest and most isolated sea cliff traverses in the UK. The South West Coast Path, at 630 miles, 1,014 kilometres, the longest national trail in England and Wales, starts at Minehead and runs along all of Exmoor's coast. There are small harbours at Lynmouth, Porlock Weir and Coombe Martin. Once important for coastal trade, their primary use now is for pleasure sailing and fishing. Rivers The high ground forms the catchment area for numerous rivers and streams. There are about 300 miles, 483 kilometres, of named rivers on Exmoor. The River X, from which Exmoor takes its name, rises at X Head near the village of Simmons Bath, close to the Bristol Channel coast, but flows more or less directly due south, so that most of its length lies in Devon. 
It reaches the sea at a substantial rear estuary on the south English Channel coast of Devon. Historically, its lowest bridging point was at Exeter, though there is now a viaduct for the M5 motorway about 2 miles, 3.2 kilometres, south of the city centre. It has several tributaries which arise on Exmoor. The River Baal runs from northern Exmoor to join the River X at Exbridge, Devon. The river and the Baal Valley are both designated as biological sites of special scientific interest. Another tributary, the River Hadio, flows from the Wimbleball Lake. The other rivers arising on Exmoor flow north to the Bristol Channel. These include the River Hedden, which runs along the western edges of Exmoor, reaching the North Devon coast at Hedden's Mouth, and the East and West Lynn, which meet at Lynmouth. Hoare Oak Water is a moorland tributary of the East Lynn River, the confluence being at Waters Meet. The River Horner, which is also known as Horner Water, rises near Luckham and flows into Porlock Bay near Hurlstone Point. Section 2. Climate Along with the rest of southwest England, Exmoor has a temperate climate, which is generally wetter and milder than the rest of England. The mean annual temperature at Simmons Bath is 8.3 degrees Celsius, 47 degrees Fahrenheit, and shows a seasonal and a diurnal variation, but due to the modifying effect of the sea, the range is less than in most other parts of the UK. January is the coldest month, with mean minimum temperatures between 1 degrees Celsius, 34 degrees Fahrenheit, and 2 degrees Celsius, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. July and August are the warmest months in the region, with mean daily maxima around 21 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In general, December is the month with the least sunshine, and June the sunniest. The southwest of England has a favoured location with respect to the Azores high pressure, when it extends its influence northeastwards towards the UK, particularly in summer. Cloud often forms inland, especially near hills, and acts to reduce sunshine amounts. The average annual sunshine is about 1,600 hours. Rainfall tends to be associated with Atlantic depressions or with convection. In summer, convection caused by solar surface heating sometimes forms shower clouds, and a large proportion of rainfall falls from showers and thunderstorms at this time of year. The average annual total rainfall is 69.6 inches, 1,768 millimetres, although 7.35 inches, 187 millimetres, fell in the 24-hour period preceding 10am on the 16th of August 1952, which was one of the contributory factors leading to the flooding in Lynmouth. About 8 to 15 days of snowfall is typical. November to March have the highest mean wind speeds, with June to August having the lightest winds. The predominant wind direction is from the southwest. Section 3. History. There is evidence of occupation of the area by people from Mesolithic times onwards. In the Neolithic period, people started to manage animals and grow crops on farms cleared from the woodland, rather than act purely as hunter-gatherers. It is also likely that extraction and smelting of mineral ores to make metal tools, weapons, containers and ornaments started in the late Neolithic and continued into the Bronze and Iron Ages. An earthen ring at Paracum is believed to be a Neolithic henge dating from 5000 to 4000 BC, and Cow Castle, which is where white water meets the River Baal, is an Iron Age fort at the top of a conical hill. Tar Steps are a prehistoric, circa 1000 BC, clapper bridge across the River Baal, about 2.5 miles, 4 kilometres southeast of Withypool, and 4 miles, 6 kilometres northwest of Dulverton. The stone slabs weigh up to 5 long tonnes, 5,080 kilograms apiece, and the bridge has been designated by English Heritage as a Grade 1 listed building to recognise its special architectural, historical or cultural significance. There is little evidence of Roman occupation, apart from two fortlets on the coast. Holwell Castle at Paracum was a Norman Mott and Bailey castle built to guard the junction of the east-to-west and north-to-south trade routes, enabling movement of people and goods and the growth of the population. 
Alternative explanations for its construction suggest it may have been constructed to obtain taxes at the River Head and Bridging Place, or to protect and supervise silver mining in the area around Coombe Martin. It was 131 feet, 40 metres in diameter, and 20 feet, 6 metres high, above the bottom of a rock-cut ditch, which is 9 feet, 3 metres deep. It was built, in the late 11th or early 12th century, of earth with timber palisades for defence and a one- or two-storey wooden dwelling. It was probably built by either Martin de Tours, the first lord of Paracum, William de Falaise, who married Martin's widow, or Robert Fitzmartin, although there are no written records to validate this. The earthworks of the castle are still clearly visible from a nearby footpath, but there is no public access to them. During the Middle Ages, sheep farming for the wool trade came to dominate the economy. The wool was spun into thread on isolated farms and collected by merchants to be woven, fulled, dyed and finished in thriving towns such as Dunster. The land started to be enclosed, and from the 17th century onwards, larger estates developed, leading to establishment of areas of large, regular-shaped fields. During this period, a royal forest and hunting ground was established, administered by a warden. In the mid-17th century, John Bovey was the warden. He built a house at Simmons Bath, and for 150 years it was the only house in the forest. The royal forest was sold off in 1818. The Simmons Bath House was bought, along with the accompanying farm, by John Knight for the sum of £50,000. Knight set about converting the Royal Forest into agricultural land. He and his family built most of the large farms in the central section of the moor, and built 22 miles, 35 kilometres, of metalled access roads to Simmons Bath. He built a 29-mile, 47-kilometre wall around his estate, much of which still survives. In the mid-19th century, a mine was developed alongside the River Baal. The mine was originally called Wheel Maria, then changed to Wheel Eliza. It was a copper mine from 1845 to 1854, and then an iron mine until 1857, although the first mining activity on the site may be from 1552. At Simmons Bath, a restored Victorian water-powered sawmill, which was damaged in the floods of 1992, has now been purchased by the National Park and returned to working order. It is now used to make the footpath signs, gates, stiles and bridges for various sites in the park. Section 4. Ecology In addition to the Exmoor Coastal Heaths, site of special scientific interest, SSSI, two other areas are specifically designated. North Exmoor covers 29,666 acres, 12,005 hectares, and includes the Dunkery Beacon and the Holnicote and Horner Water Nature Conservation Review Sites and the Chains Geological Conservation Review Site. The Chains Site is nationally important for its southwestern lowland heath communities and for transitions from ancient semi-natural woodland through upland heath to blanket mire. The site is also of importance for its breeding bird communities, its large population of the nationally rare heath fritillary butterfly, Melipta athalia, an exceptional woodland lichen flora, and its palynological interest of deep peat on the chains. The South Exmoor SSSI is smaller, covering 7,741 acres, 3,133 hectares, and including the River Baal and its tributaries with submerged plants such as the alternate water milfoil, Meriophyllum alterniflorum. There are small areas of semi-natural woodland within the site, including some which are ancient. The most abundant tree species is sessile oak, Quercus petrea. The shrub layer is very sparse, and the ground flora includes bracken, bilberry, and a variety of mosses. The heaths have strong breeding populations of birds, including windchat, Saxicola rubetra, and stonechat, Saxicola torquata. Wheat ear, Enanthe enanthe, are common near stone boundary walls and other stony places. Grasshopper warbler, Locustella nevia, breed in scrub and tall heath. Trees on the moorland edges provide nesting sites for redpole, Acanthus flamia, common buzzard, Buteo buteo, and raven, Corvus corax. Flora 
Uncultivated heath and moorland cover about a quarter of Exmoor landscape. Some moors are covered by a variety of grasses and sedges, while others are dominated by heather. There are also cultivated areas, including the Brendon Hills, which lie in the east of the National Park. There are also 32.4 square miles, 84 square kilometres, of woodland, comprising a mixture of broad-leaved, oak, ash and hazel, and conifer trees. Horner woodlands and Tar Steps woodlands are prime examples. The country's highest beech wood, 1,200 feet, 366 metres above sea level, is at Birch Cleave at Simmons Bath. At least two species of white beam tree, Sorbus subcuneata and Sorbus taxon d, are unique to Exmoor. These woodlands are home to lichens, mosses and ferns. Exmoor is the only national location for the lichens Biotoridium deletescens, Rhinodina fimbriata and Rhinodina flavisorolifera, the latter having been found only on one individual tree. Fauna Sheep have grazed on the moors for more than 3,000 years, shaping much of the Exmoor landscape by feeding on moorland grasses and heather. Traditional breeds include Exmoor Horn, Cheviot and White-Faced Dartmoor and Grey-Faced Dartmoor sheep. Devon Ruby Red cattle are also farmed in the area. Exmoor ponies can be seen roaming freely on the moors. They are a land race rather than a breed of pony, and may be the closest breed remaining in Europe to wild horses. The ponies are rounded up once a year to be marked and checked over. In 1818, Sir Richard Ackland, the last warden of Exmoor, took 30 ponies and established the Ackland Herd, now known as the Anchor Herd, whose direct descendants still roam the moor. In the Second World War, the moor became a training ground, and the breed was nearly killed off, with only 50 ponies surviving the war. The ponies are classified as endangered by the Rare Breeds Survival Trust, with only 390 breeding females left in the UK. In 2006, a Rural Enterprise Grant, administered locally by the South West Rural Development Service, was obtained to create a new Exmoor Pony Centre at Ashwick, at a disused farm with 17 acres, 6.9 hectares, of land, with a further 138 acres, 56 hectares, of moorland. Red deer have a stronghold on the moor, and can be seen on quiet hillsides in remote areas, particularly in the early morning. The moorland habitat is also home to hundreds of species of birds and insects. Birds seen on the moor include merlin, peregrine falcon, Eurasian curlew, European stonechat, dipper, Dartford warbler and ring owl. Black grouse and red grouse are now extinct on Exmoor, probably as a result of a reduction in habitat management and for the former species, an increase in visitor pressure. Beast of Exmoor the Beast of Exmoor is a cryptozoological cat, see the article entitled Phantom Cat, that is reported to roam Exmoor. There have been numerous reports of eyewitness sightings, however the official Exmoor National Park website lists the beast under traditions, folklore and legends, and the BBC calls it the famous yet elusive Beast of Exmoor, allegedly. Sightings were first reported in the 1970s, although it became notorious in 1983 when a South Molton farmer claimed to have lost over 100 sheep in the space of three months, all of them apparently killed by violent throat injuries. It is reported as being between 4 feet 1.2 metres and 8 feet 2.4 metres from nose to tail. Descriptions of its coloration range from black to tan or dark grey. It is possibly a cougar or black leopard which was released sometime in the 1960s or 1970s after a law was passed making it illegal for them to be kept in captivity outside zoos. However, considering that cougar and leopard lifespans are 12 to 15 years, this is unlikely. In 2006, the British Big Cats Society reported that a skull found by a Devon farmer was that of a puma, However, the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, states that, based on the evidence, DEFRA does not believe that there are big cats living in the wild in England. Section 5. Government and Politics The National Park, 71% of which is in Somerset and 29% in Devon, 
has a resident population of 10,600. It was designated a national park in 1954 under the 1949 National Parks and Access to the Countryside Act. The largest landowners are the National Trust, which owns over 10% of the land, and the National Park Authority, which owns about 7%. Other areas are owned by the Forestry Commission, Crown Estate and water companies. The largest private landowner is the Badgerthy Land Company, which represents hunting interests. From 1954 on, local government was the responsibility of the district and county councils, which remain responsible for the social and economic well-being of the local community. Since 1997, the Exmoor National Park Authority, which is known as a single-purpose authority, has taken over some functions to meet its aims to conserve and enhance the natural beauty, wildlife and cultural heritage of the national parks, and promote opportunities for the understanding and enjoyment of the special qualities of the parks by the public, including responsibility for the conservation of the historic environment. The Park Authority receives 80% of its funding as a direct grant from the government. The Park Authority Committee consists of members from parish and county councils and six appointed by the Secretary of State. The work is carried out by rangers, volunteers and a team of 13 estate workers who carry out a wide range of tasks including maintaining the many miles of rights of way, hedge laying, fencing, swaling, walling, invasive weed control and habitat management on National Park Authority land. There are ongoing debates between the authority and farmers over the biological monitoring of SSSIs, showing the need for a controlled regime of grazing and burning. Farmers claim that these regimes are not practical or effective in the long term. Section 6. Sport and Recreation Although the hunting of animals, particularly deer, with dogs was abolished by the Hunting Act 2004, the Exmoor hunts still meet in full regalia and there is a campaign to resurrect this rural sport. For others, walking, climbing and the scenery are the attractions. The Coleridge Way is a 36 mile, 58 kilometre footpath which follows the walks taken by poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge to Portlock starting from Coleridge Cottage at Nether Stowey, where he once lived. It starts in the Quantocks before moving on to the Brendon Hills and crosses the fringes of Exmoor National Park at Dunkery Beacon before finishing in Porlock. The Two Moors Way runs from Ivybridge in South Devon to Lynmouth on the coast of North Devon, crossing parts of both Dartmoor and Exmoor. Both of these walks intersect with the South West Coast Path, Britain's longest national trail, which starts at Minehead and follows the Exmoor coast before continuing to Poole. Section 7. Places of Interest The attractions of Exmoor include 208 scheduled ancient monuments, 16 conservation areas and other open access land as designated by the Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000. Exmoor receives approximately 1.4 million visitor days per year. Many come to walk on the moors or along waymarked paths such as the Coleridge Way. Attractions on the coast include the Cliff Railway, which connects Linton to neighbouring Lynmouth, where the East and West Lynn River meet. Woody Bay, a few miles west of Linton, is home to the Linton and Barnstable Railway, a narrow gauge railway which connected the twin towns of Linton and Lynmouth to Barnstable, 20 miles. 32 kilometres away. Further along the coast, Porlock is a quiet coastal town with an adjacent salt marsh nature reserve and a harbour at nearby Porlock Weir. Watchet is a historic harbour town with a marina and is home to a carnival which is held annually in July. Inland, many of the attractions are centred around small towns and villages or linked to the river valleys, such as the ancient Clapper Bridge at Tar Steps and the Snowdrop Valley near Weddon Cross which is carpeted in snowdrops in February and later displays bluebells. Withypool is also in the Bull Valley. The Two Moors Way passes through the village. As well as Dunster Castle, Dunster's other attractions include a priory, dovecot, yarn market, inn, packhorse bridge, mill and a stop on the West Somerset Railway. Exford lies on the River X. Brendon, in the Brendon Valley, is noted for the annual Exmoor Folk Festival. 
Exmoor has been the setting for several novels, including the 19th century Lorna Doon, A Romance of Exmoor, by Richard Doddridge Blackmore, and Margaret Drabble's 1998 novel The Witch of Exmoor. The park was featured on the television programme Seven Natural Wonders twice as one of the wonders of the West Country. Section 8. See also. See also the Wikipedia article entitled Holnicote Estate. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation Licence available at www.gnu.org forward slash copyleft forward slash fdl.html.